What's up guys, welcome to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at Palantir stock, ticker symbol PLTR, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Wednesday, May 22nd. Alright guys, Palantir stock here today down 38 cents per share, that's minus 1.76% in regular trading hours. Uh, listen, it's down about 4 cents after hours, whatever. Take that with a grain of salt because volume is especially low in the after hours. Off hours, I always take with a grain of salt that goes for pre-market and after hours unless volume is much higher than average, meaning typically the, my rule of thumb is at least meeting if not exceeding the kind of lunch period intraday session volume because that added sample size of course helps make a move or movement more definitive. All right, let's take a look at Palantir here today and get as good of a feel as we possibly can of this stock heading into tomorrow. We'll look at the volume profile, we'll look at the psychological levels that, of course, a lot of money's paying attention to, so we need to as well. Implied volatility, we'll look at, expect, at the expected move for tomorrow, and then the directional bias for tomorrow coming out of the chain. Let's get started here on the five minute chart with that volume profile analysis. Listen, by the way, if you're new here, if you have not done so already, guys, Palantir is a daily upload, so I appreciate you subscribing to the channel and I will keep the Palantir videos coming daily. So let's take a look under the hood and see if we can pull anything out of here. Off the open, guys, we get a high volume open, that's very normal, and a relatively contextual fade off in volume as time goes on, right? We expect volume to get lower each, each consecutive, or I suppose, yeah, consecutive candle after the open. So you have to change the way that you think about this to what is normal for that time of day. So you might have a lower green bar than red bar here, but this takes a little bit of an understanding of what does it normally look like? Because these two, interestingly enough, like that bar and that one, I would argue are almost like equal because we normally expect to see such a quick dump off in volume that seeing these two hang on, even though the, even though the green bar is lower than the red, I would argue contextually speaking to what's normal, they kind of offset each other in terms of any bias we'd be able to pull out. This here, it all offsets each other, right? We're seeing random pops and it's kind of a mixed bag. Moving through the day, we see this occur. That is like the minimum amount of bias that I'm willing to assign. Two consecutive bars, clearly out of context, but it's only two consecutive bars. So like a minimal amount of bearish bias there. This here kind of offsetting. You can see this higher green bar. That's a It has kind of a large wick on it, right? That's going to be a battle bar. A lot of buying and selling going on at the same time. So we can overlook that. And then moving through the day here, you can see a very, very minimal amount of bullish bias there. Perhaps offsetting the previous bearish bias that we saw. And then into the close, it's pretty normal. All right, and then these two, of course, are going to be rebalancing bars. I tend to ignore those altogether because it's just a lot of algorithmically driven volume, both buying and selling, pumping up the volume. Now, when we get to the end of that, we kind of end up with like a net neutral volume profile, but that doesn't mean nothing because we had a 1.76% down day today. So, bull, I'm sorry, bears, ideally what you guys, guys would have been looking for is at least some obvious bearish bias in the volume profile. Whereas bulls, you guys were kind of looking for, you know, in a, in, a, in a perfect world, some bullish bias, but you can't really expect that on a nearly 2% red day. So ideally, you guys would really be looking for really no bias at all to support that downside move. And that's kind of what we got here today. Really no bias at all. But the bears, of course, still won the day down nearly 2%. Let's move on here. Let's take a look at something arguably a lot simpler. Um, and I would say very effective. Th these are the psychological self-fulfilling prophecy levels. Um, the 50 period is the white line. The 200 period is the gray line. Of course, two of the most, if not the most, uh, popular indicators you could ever slap on a chart. And we're going to look at the 30 minute, which is this, and then the four hour and the daily, very popular time frames. So looking here at the 30 minute, you can see here, guys, that today in pre-market, we did give up the 200 period moving average. Okay, that we, that's kind of what we're looking at here. Um, today from last night's video we were right in between and we gave that up today we didn't really get a retest intraday i prefer to see retests okay because that adds a lot more confirmation when you get a retest on higher volume whereas pre-market's very low volume especially that early but here's what i'm kind of looking at tomorrow let's start with you bears here today bears any retest of that 50 period 
you're going to want to see that reject and do so on higher volume. We're already below the level, so I don't really mind whatever volume it wants to test on. That's fine. As long as we reject on higher volume, ideally, than the test. Bulls, how far away are we? We currently find ourselves approximately 0.76-ish percent away from that 50 period. Okay. And from the 200 period, we're looking at about 1.5%. Okay. So, Bulls, the ideal scenario, obviously, is to rip up through both of those. Back test whichever one happens to be higher at the time, if it yanks the 50 period up with it, or if the 200 period is still the higher level at that time, on lower volume, after a high volume rip through, retest lower volume, and then bounce on higher volume. That, that would be wonderful. Okay, but looking at this from a more, I don't want to say realistic, okay, but just dealing with the higher probability of lower volatility, right? You can't always expect super high volatility. It would be great to reclaim the 50 period because that could help push us if we could reclaim the 50 period as support up back through the 200 period and just be above both at some point in the near future anyway. Okay, so let's move on here and take a look at the four hour. You can see guys, this 50 period has been a very relevant level on the four hour chart as of late on Palantir. We're currently about 0.83% away from the 50 period here on the four hour chart. So listen, bulls, you know what I'm going to say, right? The, the, the goal ideally is to break up through that level, retest it, and bounce, claiming it as support. Because we've been struggling with this for a number of days now. It's been at least like four days or so that we've been really actively struggling with it. So just to claim that as support um, and, then, and then give Palantir an honest shot in the near future of using that as support to push higher would be a great start. Whereas you bears, this chart's really simple. Any retest at all of the 50 period, you would just want to see that reject hard like we saw off the open today. Now, the daily chart. This is arguably the most important. You guys remember yesterday we were talking about that $21.50 to $22 channel. It got a little tighter from $21 to $22 in the last couple of days, tightened up to $21.50 to $22. Now, that bearish um, scenario that we were talking about yesterday, breaking down below, but, but beneath at least $21.50, that played out here today. That opens up the potential, the potential for you bears if you can hold 2150 as resistance to break downside beneath 21, which was kind of the lower region of that channel before it tightened up to 2150 to 22. So the channel is now again 21 to 22. Each whole dollar on Palantir is going to be a relatively large psychological level with of course, of course each five and $10 increment um, being even more relevant. So bears, the goal really is to begin that stair-stepping down process, getting down below 21 and claiming it as resistance, whereas bulls, any test of 21, we don't really want to give that up. And I would say the near-term goal or the smaller goal is to reclaim 2150. And the ultimate goal in the more than near term is to get back above 22. Um, that's really the, the ultimate goal, at least in the near term, because okay, that would set us up for an upside test of that 50-day moving average which of course is gonna to have to get broken at some point here if we plan on going higher. Now, implied volatility, especially important for those of you trading options. Compared to the last week, it is a little bit low. I would say flat to a little low. Okay, it's definitely a little, little beneath where we were about a week ago. Compared to the last month, IV is very low. And compared to the last three months, it's also very low. That's important to understand, right? Because you, you're paying up front for Vega value, quite a bit of it if IV is very high. And when it's really low, you're paying very little Vega value up front, at least comparatively speaking. Um, comparatively speaking. So what I like to do is wait until I have a pretty strong directional bias that I'm confident can outrun theta. And if IV is low at that time, that's when I look to buy my options. Okay, but if IV is very low, and I'm trying to sell options to farm some premium, probably not the best time to do it because you're getting a smaller premium up front in exchange for taking on that risk as an option seller. All right, so understand where that lies in relation to your intended trade and your intended trade time frame. Now, expect and move here on Palantir. We have weekly expirations on Palantir, no luxury of daily. So Fridays, or more so, the expected move by Friday's close compared to today's close is plus or minus 79 cents per share. 
Now, you guys know we don't have like earnings or anything between now and then, so we can do this how we normally do. Divide that by three trading days, because we're trying to get tomorrow, right? So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, add back 50%. That's how we do that. And we end up with a, a plus or minus expected move by tomorrow's close compared to today's close of about plus or minus 39.40 cents. Okay, that's the approximate um, one standard deviation expected volatility by tomorrow's close being priced in by the market. Now, directional bias, you're probably wondering about that. Let's take a look at volume. 178,000 total contracts traded today. Of those, we have 127,000 calls and 51,000 puts. So call side bias on the overall ratio, not out of the ordinary for Palantir as of late. And then we break that down by the short-term speculators here in the 0 to 20 delta range. We get 44,000 calls and just 12,000 puts. Relatively heavy bullish bias out of the short-term speculators today as well. Listen, guys, I hope to see you come trade with me every single day. Um, at that link in the pinned comment, that's where I'm sending out my personal scalp setup alerts, my personal in-play stock alerts, human verified by me, unusual options activity all day, every day. And of course, working with my Platinum one-on-one -on -one members. Hope to see you join, and I'll see you in the next one.